put the Jake Paul situation aside for now, and let's focus more on, like, this past weekend, the Holyfield v. Tor Belfort. And even before then, it was supposed to be Oscar De La Hoya fight and v. Tor Belfort. Yeah. Are these things good or bad for boxing? I think most people that saw the fight felt like, ah, well, man, what's Holyfield doing in there? Yeah. I think it depends on who's in there. Mm. I don't think we can make a blanket statement and say exhibitions are bad for boxing. Like, nobody said that when Roy and Tyson fought. True. I mean, you had some people say that. I don't say nobody, but I think the majority of us, and I, I'm, I'm included, like, I wanted to see it, right? But then I was like, I want it, man. Like, you know, somebody tweeted out, like, it's, it's like both your uncles fighting at the at the at the barbecue, the family barbecue. Right. And that's how I felt. It felt like, man, I got respect for both of y'all, man. And I love Roy. Y'all know how I feel about Roy. Please don't hurt each other, man. Like just like do your thing, but just don't hurt. So I was torn mm -hmm. about that particular fight. And 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 I think the um the exhibitions as a whole can be good. They're bringing eyeballs, attention, crossover fans that really don't care about boxing, but I, I follow the Paul brothers. I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, these, these exhibitions, some of them are on ESPN, first take and different things. They're getting mainstream worldwide coverage. And I don't think that's a bad thing for the sport. But I think when you start doing things like allowing Holyfield at his age on short notice to get into a fight with a man that I think he was younger than Holyfield, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Younger. Like, that's when you start. Like, I think you got to use discretion. You can't just let anybody do it because he's a name. Don't just let a name fight. Make sure the name is viable. Make sure he can still, you know, and they may need to bring some experts in that actually know the sport, not just suits that can say, man, no, trust me, you don't want this guy in there because that could have ended er ugly. And that, and that referee, he's a good referee. And mm -hmm. I, I can almost read his mind was like, holy. This ain't happening on my watch, bro. This fight is over. Right. Mm -hmm. And you got to respect that. So mm -hmm. they can be good, and I think they have been good. And I bought several of them. I didn't buy that one because I, I just knew, like, this ain't going to be good. Mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't going to be good. Um, so they can be good, but just not one like that. You got to really – like, even Oscar. I was concerned about Oscar. Mm -hmm. Like, he's been away for a long time. Yeah. Belfort is a big dude. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know how that fight would have went if Oscar would have went in there. Mm -hmm. I'm also a fighter, so I know we always believe we got one more left in us. That's happened for as long as I've been following the sport. So at some point, man, you got to, you know, commissions and, and the business people got to be willing to say, look, this may do good business, but this ain't going to be good overall. I got I got I got to decline this one. I mm -hmm. can't approve this one. I think if we just if we try to try to strike that balance. I think we'll be okay. You know, it's not perfect because Tyson and, and Jones could have ended bad. Mm -hmm. You just don't know it's boxing. So I think they can be good, but you got to be real smart with it, man. Who Who is the onus more on? Is it the commission? Because obviously they're the boxing people. Right. Or, or is it is it the promoter? Is it Triller? Like, tr should Triller have not even gone that route? Should they have had a combo with Holyfield and said, you know what? No, nah, this isn't good. This isn't well, good. Well, I mean, you definitely got to say that some of the onus is on Triller, but they're not boxing people, mm -hmm. you know? But I think they made the adjustment. You know, they came out with a statement the following week, days later, said, we're not going to do this no more. We're just going to focus on real fights. We're going to keep that going, and we're not going to do the exhibitions anymore. I think the, the, the main onus falls on the commission. Mm -hmm. The commission has to look at this and say, okay, they got the same – like." Commissions are turning fighters down and opponents down every day. Yeah. So you can't just look at a name fighter who's getting getting in here for an exhibition and then look at the fee you're going to get. You got to you got to you got to be able to make some tough decisions and say, hey, I'm not approving this. Not not under my commission. Maybe you go some other commission, but mm -hmm. not under my commission. So the majority of it is on is definitely on the commission for sure. Does it does it uh, does it bother you? I mean, being someone who retired young, right? Um, does it concern you to see some of these guys wanting to come back? Or is that just a natural thing? Did, do you just expect, you know, 40-some-year-old Oscar, 50-some-year-old Holyfield, 50-some-year-old James Tony? Do you expect fighters to still want to get in there? Or is it is it 
is it a more alarming thing where it's like, man, are these guys doing it for the money? You know, like, I mean, obviously we won't know, only they would know those answers, but just, just yeah. seeing some of these old timers getting in there, is, is that concerning to you to say, man, what am I, like, how am I going to be feeling 10 years from now? Yeah. You know? I mean, of course it's concerning, man, you know, but I also understand it. Mm-hmm. You know, both things are true. You know, anytime you've, anytime you, you're starting to age and you haven't been in a boxing ring and you try to go back in a boxing ring, it's dangerous. You're risking injury and you're risking death. That doesn't change. Just because it's an exhibition doesn't mean that you can't get injured and doesn't mean you can't die. So it's always a concern. But being somebody who's been around the sport a long time, it's like a soldier who goes off to war. Like a, a civilian, we're on the outside saying, dude, you got bullets wh- whizzing by your, your head every day. How do you how do you function? He's like, dude, I was trained to do this. I've been around this, you know, for many years now. Same thing as a fighter. So even though that concern is there, there's also a part of me that's like, okay, let me see how this plays out. Mm-hmm. The fight's going to happen, so I'm not going to cover my eyes. I've been around this game my whole life. So there's a part of me that, that you know, I'm, I'm going to say I'm numb to it, but, you know, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. And then being on this side of the retirement piece, bro, it is extremely hard <laughs> mm. to not pick up the phone mm-hmm. and go get a quick bag. And you still want to fight too. See, people, they, I'm tired of the sport. I want to retire. But when you rest it, you get regenerated physically and mentally. And you, man, I just want to do it again. I want that feeling. I want to get the interviews. I want to, so fighters are dealing with this stuff and fighting with this stuff, man. So now there's a lot of money in the sport of boxing, probably more than it, it is more than it's ever been. So they're trying to get a cut too. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it's concerned. But I also understand it. it's a it's a tough dichotomy, bro. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, hopefully, I I don't ever have to see you in one of these <laughs> exhibitions. Um, but that being you said, come out of cover it? that I was gonna say that being said, if you do, I'm there, bro. Let's okay, get that bag. Sure. Let's get that bag. Let's get that bag. I'm gonna uh, make sure we got Sean on the ground. We we'll make sure we got we got BT on the ground. Like, nah, listen, man. Sean can stay on, at man. home for that one. Sean can stay at home for that one. That, <laughs> that, that brings me out. That brings me out. So if, if, if you ever do, big dog out. Absolutely. If you ever do, I'm there. I'm there. Um, but that being said, that being said, you mentioned Jake Paul, right? Jake Paul. Quickly becoming the face of boxing. I think, maybe, <laughs> I hope not. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I don't care either way. But having said that, he is getting eyeballs, right? So that's a good thing. Um, he fought your boy, Tyron Woodley, got the dub. Um, on to the next one. Is is this kind of concerning that Jake Paul, again, I'm joking when I say he's the face of boxing, but he might become the face of boxing the way he's moving. Is that concerning to you, knowing that, wow, what is becoming of boxing? How is it that this guy, I mean, obviously we know he comes with the following, so that's the reason why he's getting the eyeballs, but it seems like that's where the business is now shifting. Like, they almost rather put more emphasis and focus on a Jake Paul fight than real fights like a Terrence Crawford versus Sean Porter, you yeah. know? Is, is is that kind of concerning about the state of boxing? No, I'm not concerned about the state of boxing, man. Mm-hmm. It, it's amazing to me that, like, we get so up in arms about Jake Paul and, and his brother and, and what they're doing. I can give you a list of things we should be talking about that are hurting the sport of boxing and that, that we should be dealing with openly, privately mm-hmm. and openly, and we just push, push and pad. We just bury and we keep on doing what we're doing. So this is, I'm not, this, I'm not worried about exhibitions, you know, taking out, taking down boxing. Like I'm that, that ain't it. You know, will Jake Paul be, ever become the face of boxing? I don't think so. I don't see that. Like how, like you would have to fight a re- like somebody real, you beat a real fighter. I mean, like a real, like somebody that's still young, somebody that's a champion, somebody that's like, all right, I'm going to put my championship to the side. I'm going to come see you. Mm-hmm. That's a different, and you beat that person, that's a different story. We're not talking about that. Jake, is, Jake and his team are very selective on who they fight. They know they can do numbers if they get the right name. Um, so that's that. I don't think he'll ever become the face of boxing, but I will say this. 
I got respect for what the Paul brothers are doing because they show more dedication to the sport than some fighters who are real fighters. Mm, wow. Wow. Like, people talk in the game. And these guys are out in real camps. They're, they're setting up their own camps, but they're bringing real fighters in. They're going to other people's camps. These guys have been all over the U.S. trying to, you know, pay their dues. They getting it. They got the scars and the black eyes to prove it. They know, you know, they're not just out here faking and, and, and playing. They, they're taking it serious. So I respect that. I respect and I And I truly think both Paul brothers really want to be good in the sport. We'll see how far they go. But I think they really want to be good in the sport. And you can see it again by their working. And you look at, you know, Jake Paul, he hired DJ Flores and Jay Leon Love. Those are real fighters that used to fight, that know boxing. So they're trying to do it the right way. And I respect the grind and I respect the hustle. And, and the last thing is, don't get mad at these guys because they built a fan base. However, they got the fan base. And that fan base is crossing over into our sport. And people are like, oh, they're taking away from the fighters that are doing it the hard. No, they're not. How? Mm. How? You got to build your fan base, build, build, build your reputation, and get people to follow you wherever you go, however you're going to do it. But you can't knock the Paul brothers because they're getting it how they're getting it, man. I respect it. it it's like, you know, I, I, I love the attention our sport is getting. Cause I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on the ground, so I'm talking to people that don't watch boxing. I mean, you'll get that Jake Paul, Tyron Willie fight. Mm -hmm. Like, I love. I think it's good for our sport. Mm -hmm. I think it's good for our sport if it's the right opponents. Now, I don't want to. I'm not a fan of fighters getting overmatched. I don't want to see fighters get knocked out cold when they shouldn't have been. That, that, that's not what I'm talking about. But, but Tyron and Jake, they were evenly matched in terms of, you know, where Tyron is in his career. Jake coming up. I respect it, bro. You know, get it how you got to get it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake Paul versus Canelo coming soon. <laughs> that, oh, my God. That, that's... <laughs> I don't know, bro. Maybe Canelo's, like, well, first of all, you don't think he's going to get past Caleb Plant. So that's a that's a <laughs> nice starter. But I'm just saying, like, I, is that a big money fight? Canelo versus Jake Paul? I mean, I'm going to never say, I'm going to never say a fight's not going to happen. I learned my lesson with that, with, with, with Floyd and Connor. <laughs> True. <laughs> Never thought that fight was going to happen. Didn't mm. see it. I'm like, bro, I would love to see Floyd come back. But come on, bro. This dude is an MMA. It's never happened. It's not going to happen. So I'm never going to say it's not happening. I just know that in this sport, money talks. And if the right situation happens, Canelo, whatever, he's at a certain point in his career. Jake wins another couple fights. It's, it's probably possible. I don't know if it's likely, but it's definitely anything is possible in this sport, bro. And you know that wow. anything oh, is true. wrong.